Come on now, Sam. This is a, a video about a couple of nerves in the neck. You can do this in under 10 minutes. Answer cervicalis. Answer cervicalis is one of those things in the neck, kind of comes up in a lecture or somebody talks about it and you think, oh, that sounds nice at the time. And then it comes up again and you, ah, oh, yeah, I completely missed what that was. I've completely forgotten. Um, but you kind of nod and pretend you know what the answer cervicalis is. I'm gonna fix that right now by describing the anatomy of the answer cervicalis in the neck. It's basically a couple of nerves. They make a bit of a loop. They innervate some of the strap muscles in the neck. I'll make it with pipe cleaners, it'll be fine. So, answer cervicalis. Cervicalis means it's in the neck. There is a cervical plexus, I know, as well as the brachial plexus. Don't worry about it today. Um, answer means like a handle, you know, like a handle on a cup or a mug or something, a handle, because the answer cervicalis is this pretty loop of, of nerves. Um, so it gets a cool name. Um, now, here are the spinal nerve roots in the neck. Um, so we have C1, C2. So C1 is coming out um, superior to the first cervical vertebra. C1, C2, C3. And those are the ones we're interested in today. Uh, as we come around here, point out some other deep structures which are going to be useful. This here is the common carotid artery. That's the internal carotid artery. This yellow streak running with it is the vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, that's running down to the thorax. And then this loop here, whoop, that is the hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, which is going to go to the tongue. Answer cervicalis is essentially two nerves that come together and form a loop most of the time. So it has two uh, roots. So the superior root is formed by fibres from C1 and C2, the anterior rami. Um, those fibres come together, form a single nerve that runs down here, the superior root of answer cervicalis. And then C2 and C3 send fibres that come together and join and form the inferior root of anterior answer cervicalis, which also runs down here. The reason I highlighted the hypoglossal nerve is that, hey, look where C1 and C2 are. Look where that superior root of answer cervicalis is going to form. It forms right next to the hypoglossal nerve. And in fact, it sometimes runs in the same direction as the hypoglossal nerve with the hypoglossal nerve, which leads to confusion. The hypoglossal nerve and answer cervicalis are separate, but they might run together for a little while because that's good cable management, right? Um, there's no crossing over of fibres. The hypoglossal nerve is doing its own thing, going to the tongue. The fibres for answer cervicalis are doing their own thing, going to the strap muscles of the neck. But they might run together. You know, there's no crossing over of fibres. They're just kind of zip tied together for a little way. So don't get confused by that. Okay, another head. Right. These are the strap muscles that I'm on about. By strap muscles, they kind of they are like little straps. They're We'll talk about what they do later, but they're down here. So that's the target. That's where the nerves are going to go to. And I said that the superior uh, root of answer cervicalis is down here. So there's that common carotid artery again. There's the internal carotid artery. We can't see that on that side. So these are deep structures. Answer cervicalis is deep in the neck. In fact, if I can hold that upper root there and put the... Um, Oh, yeah, there's the internal jugular vein. That's where the superior root of answer cervicalis lies. It lies between the common carotid, internal carotid artery, and the internal jugular vein. It's that deep. Both of those things are deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. So if I was to grab another model with nerves on it, I wouldn't see it. Oh, the, um, the inferior root of answer cervicalis then lies on this side. So it lies kind of lateral to, anterior to the internal jugular vein. And look, because they're going to the same place, they've already made a little bit of a loop here. But I'll make a better, a better loop now. Look at that, those pipe cleaners have now magically joined up. There's the inferior root of, of um, the answer cervicalis. Remember, it would be quite deep, but that's yeah, lateral to the internal jugular vein. There's the superior root of answer cervicalis, that's deeper again, and they've, they've joined up and they've made this loop. And down here, they're gonna give off 
branches to the infrahyoid, three out of the four infrahyoid muscles, omohyoid, sternothyroid, and sternohyoid. That's these muscles here. So omohyoid, omo means shoulder, strangely enough. So that's a muscle that goes from, there's the hyoid bone under there, right? That's a muscle that goes from the hyoid bone out to the shoulder. Don't ask, it's in another video. Sternohyoid between the sternum and the hyoid bone, sternothyroid between the sternum and the thyroid. Anyway, right? So that's what ansa cervicalis does, and that's where it is. Why does it make a loop? Don't know. Um, probably when the neurons are sending out their axons with their axonal growth cones. Um, the nerves are, of course, moving down toward, to, to these infrahyoid muscles to innervate them. So they're following chemical cues in the extracellular matrix, in the embryo, to work their way towards those targets. And they're probably, uh, you know, these axons are following the same path, so they're kind of growing together, which makes it fairly likely they're going to meet up. And they just seem to form this loop. Um, there are branches coming off this loop to supply those three muscles. So there's kind of neurons going, yep, and yep, uh, you know, and it just, it just looks like they've joined up, which leads me to the idea of anatomical variation. So the reason this is useful anatomy is because surgery in this area of the neck, which is why I was harping on how deep it is, it's next to these blood vessels. So ansa cervicalis is outside the carotid sheath. The carotid sheath is a connective tissue tube and the internal jugular vein, common carotid artery, vagus nerve are inside it. These cervical nerves are outside it. So when you're dissecting, you don't mix them up, right? Um, but that's where they are. They're next to these big blood vessels. They're in between, you know what I mean? Yeah, anyway. So that, they're deep to these muscles. Um, but this is an area where ansa cervicalis can be damaged during surgery here. Um, so you need to be aware of it, and then also you need to be aware of the anatomical variation. Sometimes there isn't a loop. Sometimes there's more than one loop. But it'll be around here somewhere, trying to innovate these muscles. What do the strap muscles of the uh, neck do anyway? Well, they're attached to the hyoid. The hyoid is at the top of the, the larynx, or the laryngeal structures. So muscles that move the hyoid bone up and down stabilize the larynx, but also move it up and down during swallowing, so that swallowing works and swallowing is safe. So if you damage the nerve, uh, the muscles on one side will be weak and, you know, the muscles, yeah. Anyway, ansa cervicalis. That's the loop, that's where it is, that's what it does. Was that a lesson? Anyway, see you next week.